All right, guys, Boy 32 here checking out. So what we got here is one of my AR-15 pistols. This guy's got a 12 and a half inch barrel, just a cheapo handguard on a ballistic advantage barrel. It's running really cool stuff. Geisley SSA enhanced. And I got the Strike Industries. This is that really neat PDW brace. A lot of people were busting my balls in the last video I did uh, showing this thing. I was just doing a functions test. He didn't see that on the Instagram thing, so it was kind of interesting how people were making comments about it. I didn't have any sights on there, and there, there's a reason why. But in any case, one of the things I am going to do is I'm going to run this primary arms 1-6 to six on this specific setup. And in order for me to do that, I kind of want to do an upgrade. Now let me show you what I got here. This is one of the, I guess you could say, just the, uh, a generic um, quick detach little uh, scope mount that I got off of Amazon, paid like $43 for it or something like that. It held up pretty good. Now, one of the things that did concern me is that a good friend, Fit and Fire, I bar let him borrow this scope for uh, one of the events that he had, and he was saying to me that um, he was having issues with this thing keeping zero. So I had one of these laying around, and I decided to go ahead and, and change it out. So what I wanted to do while we're doing this, I wanted to just show you a little bit. All right, now, what are we doing? Oh, never mind. I wanted to show you the... Aero Precision Ultralight Scope Mount. This specific one is their extended version, but uh, let's talk about this real quickly. So if you have a need for buying one of these things, and I've got the link down below to my Amazon store if you're interested in it, but uh, I've had a lot of luck with these guys. Matter of fact, I just put it on one of my other rifles. Let's just start off by saying it's made of 6061 extruded aluminum. Uh, there are two screws on the front and the rear. You've got three cross bolt sections right here. These studs are pretty close to the space in your pick rail right here, so it eliminates a lot of movement like this. So that's not something you have to worry about. Uh, I've had a lot of luck with these guys. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and take it apart. I'm going to show you what the ins and outs look like so you can see exactly what we're doing. This is, I guess, probably one of the four or five different manufacturers that I work with as far as uh, the uh, scope mounts are concerned. But I tell you what, I've never had any issues out of these things. Also, they've got a little peep area through here. I'm not sure if that's something that anybody would use, but let's bring that camera on in here so you can see the details. Here we go. All right, so one of the things I like to compliment these guys over to Air Precision, and I'm a big Air Precision guy. I like their lowers, the lowers, the M5, M4E, M5E. I'm gonna, matter of fact, I think I might just go ahead and start on a, a large frame AR. I got a little project we're working on to do a CQB 65 Creedmoor if that makes sense but in any case one of the things I did miss is that uh, that does come with a little torque wrench right here and I love these torque screws it just one of the things about the torque screws is they just are subject to not stripping out like you would just a typical Allen wrench. Now, one of the things I will tell you is that the screws in this scope mount are made of steel. We just did a little program here earlier, and I did test them out with a magnet. So you got to be careful. Now, here's the thing. One of the other scope manufacturers that I like to use is this guy right here, Warren Tactical. Uh, these this this scope mount right here is big in the competitive world, and the reason being is that they're built like tanks similarly priced to this guy right here i don't think but there's maybe a ten dollar difference between the two but the worn tactical has steel inserts that are embedded on the other side in the aluminum so let's do this let's go ahead and take this thing down and to save time i'm just going to go ahead and use my little screwdriver right here and we'll take a look at that stuff and i won't bore you with the mounting of it because we just did that in a video a little while ago but i wanted to do a detailed look at this air precision scope mount bring those all the way out so let's go ahead i'm going to remove this guy right here and we'll be right back but before we do that let's do this so you can see right there that is a keyed area which when you tighten this down you're getting the compression on the bottom right there and there's only two screws involved now one of the things that you will experience if you're doing any kind of precision shooting then when you start tightening up your screws on your rings you're going to get a shift either left or right on your scope this is, did a pretty good job at not doing that when i was tightening it up i saw a half a degree change in the attitude of the scope so 
No big deal there. Let's go ahead and take this thing apart. Here we go. All right, so we're back. <laughs> and this guy right here has been a workhorse. This was the first primary arms low level optic, adjustable optic, or whatever you call these things these days. Put a speed ring on there, and it just works like a champ. They've come out with several other generations since then, but this guy right here just keeps ticking. So we're going to go ahead and put it on that particular AR-15 pistol. Just put it on the scope just like that. We go ahead and bring these keyed areas in like this. Now the specifications for those screws, if you ever have any questions about that, uh, and that's one of the reasons why you'll see it in another video coming up on how I mounted my scope on a uh, 6.5 Grendel a few minutes ago, is that I went out and bought this guy right here. This is the Wheeler uh, Fat Wrench and 15 inch pounds uh, is what the torque specs are on this specific scope mount using these. So let's go ahead and pop these on here real quick. Normally what I'll do is I'll loose fit these things in and then we'll just throw it onto the uh, AR pistol and then I'm not going to bore you with uh, balancing it out and leveling it. But this is how I just roll. What I want to do is I want to leave it so it can turn. As you can see, I just barely tighten those up, and it, it really did a good job at holding that scope in. There we go. So I can still move it. I want to center it up, and now I'm going to put it on the scope. But anyway, it's held with this one clamp. It goes on there. Very simple, very easy. And I have no complaints. I've used the daylights out of these things. I know that uh, I know a couple other guys that use them religiously, but uh, never had any issues. Very light. I think it's 3.27 ounces, which if you're in the mood for a light build, that's it. I know they retail on Amazon for about a little bit over $71, which is really good for this type of mount. You're getting quality here. All right, guys, that's it. If you got any questions, please don't hesitate leaving them in the comment section down below. And as always... God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. Because freedom comes in six power at about 3,250 feet per second in 556. Five, <laughs> oh, imagine if that's going to drive YouTube nuts. Let's go to Boy32. I'm out. Y'all take care, and thanks for joining.